Wow. So, um, Double Threat directed and acted in it. Yeah. 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 What was that like? Uh, it was... Uh, it was amazing, actually. I had an incredible experience. It was so interesting going from this place of having to be in charge and be the person that everyone's coming to, and then go into this character that's really in the opposite place. Um, but it was an amazing experience, and I, I had the best team, so that really helped. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, so tell us a little about the genesis of the whole, the whole idea for the story. Yeah, so I, I studied um, at CalArts. I studied acting at CalArts and, um, and have done experimental theater for many years. So it definitely was a love letter to experimental theater. Um, and I also was really interested in this idea of um, giving up your power to someone else when you have it with you all along and that journey to find that. And I'm also really interested in, in gender and gender identity and, and those lines when uh, you know, femininity and masculinity blur into each other and, and don't belong to a gender. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I've found myself in, with the discourse that's been happening, just like thinking of myself on the gender spectrum. And yeah. is that something that has come up for you as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm queer, I'm bisexual, but, uh -huh. um, and so I've always kind of felt in this liminal space, uh -huh. um, but ident I identify as, as um, female cisgender. Yeah, that's but so cool. I think we all have, you know, no matter who you are, there is, we touch, you know, femininity and masculinity. It's just a part of the human condition. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, questions from the audience? <laughs> Yeah, um, not so much in dance, but I definitely have studied a lot of movement and a lot of avant-garde theater involves, um, you know, expressing in, in physical ways. And I thought that was a really um, interesting and more ambiguous way of exploring these ideas of masculinity. And I also think like, like the symbol of, the, of a suit is a, a real power symbol in our culture. Um, and so embodying that and then also embodying movement and like, you know, trying movement that feels like a masculine, you know, um, thing like you know, fighting and, and strength and, and seeing where that like can, can help you or help this character, Avery, discover a, a deeper part of herself. Yeah, I I um, referred to well, I I love Terrence Malick and and that kind of you know uh, storytelling that that isn't you know so uh, on the nose. But um, I also was really interested in the Great Beauty, um, which won the Oscar for the best foreign film in like 2015. But um, it it has a very it goes in so many different directions and has an incredible movement aspect to it and the cinematography is beautiful the way that they they the camera really dances with the movers it's it's really cool and so I I, I wanted to explore that as well with my cinematographer and my cinematographer actually was um, in the theater program with me at Cal Arts and became a cinematographer later and so we had this shorthand that was really wonderful to be able to. Um, just dive in and like perform together, really. Was your sound design, did it come like first? Or did it, is it something that was an interesting process to figure out exactly what it Yeah, it, it came after, um, mostly after the final edit, uh, the the sound design came, but I worked with some really interesting composers. And, you know, I mean, I, we shot like in October of 2019 and I was wrapping it up and, um, you know, COVID hit. So I really wanted to give everyone a lot of time to be able to complete their work and take care of themselves. And so I think that actually gave way to allowing like the score and the sound design to really um, take its time and evolve. Go ahead.
<laughs> yeah. Um, well, when I was writing it, I didn't initially see it as a dance film, um, but I, I was really curious about this idea of of the viewer stepping into the experience and like viewing herself in a way. Um, and the script, yeah, I did have some moments that were marked that were um, more specific uh, for the dance, but I was writing it for myself and and the director, so I really allow. I had a lot of freedom in that, and um, and we shot a lot of it like as just one large dance sequence that was improvised. Um, and I did have a choreographer work with the actors in the in the theater play, um, but even for them, that was or organic movement for them. Um, and yeah, yeah. So we just shot like two hours of me dancing nonstop and and then kind of cut it uh, together. Cool. So um, tell us, what, what, what are your future, or do you have any, another project you're working on? Yeah, I'm working on a few things. I'm writing um, something to direct again, um, maybe that I'm not in, I'll try that. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm also, I'm producing a doc that my partner Cody is directing um, and producing a short and just doing, doing little things here and there. Yeah, yeah. And are you based in Mammoth now, or are you? So I grew up in Mammoth, yeah. um, and I actually, it's such a full circle moment for me because I used to see films in this theater when I was a kid, and then it turned into a, a theater for plays, and I acted in plays on this stage, and um, so it's amazing to be able to be here. And now, yeah. and now I live in LA, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but my folks are here, so I get to come up here very often. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks so much for sharing it with Thank us. You. Thank you.